from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Splunk.conference. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. We're winding down day two of two days of live coverage. Uh, we got 20 plus blog posts on SiliconANGLE.com. And again, 17 interviews today, 17 yesterday. A lot of great content. Go to SiliconANGLE.com, SiliconANGLE.tv, and Wikibon.com for research. Our, our next guest here to talk more about security is Hyun Song, SVP of Security Markets, and uh, Manzi Mirza, Senior Director of Cyber Research. So we got an executive, and we got in the trenches. So this is going to be a fun <laughs> conversation. Welcome to theCUBE again. Good Thank to see you, you again. Welcome Thank back. You. So my first question is, um, um, before we get into some of the tactical things happening in the trenches, a lot of stuff going on the front lines and security, that certainly it's, it's all over the news, so it's not something that needs to validate, it's hot. As a business, Splunk has really got traction with the security aspect of it. I don't want to say they backed into the security business, but your platform is extensible in the sense, we've talked about this for the past four years, it's a solid platform. It's the Google search for once log files, but now all data. So the ingestion is magic. And there's some secret sauce going on in the Splunk platform. But security is a hard nut to crack. How are you guys doing it? What's the secret sauce of getting and winning the security business? The secret sauce is to actually have people like Monzi on the team. Um, <laughs> So um, we've been taking a very solution-centric approach. And I think having a very strong machine data platform is such a strong foundation, like you said. It got us into this business, but having a relentless focus on providing solutions or Splunk Enterprise Security product went through a major sort of revs along the way mm -hmm. and four releases in the last 18 months and uh, ascended in the Gardner MQ, and it's all testaments what we've been doing, trying to make sure we meet the customer's needs. And the other thing, I just want to give you some props um, and kudos for how you do the keynotes. First of all, electric keynotes, love the keynotes. But you have a customer example. It's not just the, quote, vendor pitching, it's Splunk saying, hey, here's what we're doing, yep. and by the way, here's some customers that have been using the product. So really, that, I'd love, love, love to see that. So, um, so I got to go back to last year and ask, last year was kind of a, a seminal moment in Splunk history because you had security front and center. Yeah. On the keynote, you had some big names up there. We talked on theCUBE, um, and that was pretty obvious. You guys have, were doing some business there, but what happened after Splunk 2014? Did you guys just say, double down, let's nail this? You mentioned some stats about doing some stuff really fast. What came out of 2014? Just a massive resurgence to just double down the product and the solutions? Yeah, I think we definitely doubled down on getting more people onto the team, doubled down getting more expertise, and uh, I really think it's last year, Literally, I look at .conf as the security markets coming out party. And since then, we have coined the analytics-driven security as our brand, and really went hard at adding a lot of capabilities into mm -hmm. our ES product. Not only that, we went and acquired a company in behavior analytics. So I think doubling down from yeah. that angle, maybe tripling or 10x down in that. Uh, so really delivering on what we mean by adding analytics into our portfolio. Um, so we'll look back next year, we'll do a little KPI analysis on, was this year the inflection point for solutions? So I think that's kind of what you're kind of seeing right now, right? Yeah, this is year not only for solutions, basically from a security market perspective, I'm providing multiple solutions. So we're not having a portfolio at a company yeah. level, we're having a foot having a portfolio at the security market level. Yeah, I mean, uh, I want to get into some of the tactical things, but I, gotta give, I like how you guys decoupled platform from the, the solution because you, don't, you can do a lot more very highly cohesive things in the security lens into the platform. So I got to get into the, to the trenches. So um, you're out on the front lines talking to customers. What's going on with the, the solution? Obviously, you're getting good thumbs up. But where's the action right now? If you had the kind of heat map kind of security and say, hey, you know, the attacks, the threats, and the, the, the challenges, the opportunities, malware, phishing, DDoS, all of the above, where's the action at? Where, <laughs> where are the bombs dropping, so to speak? <laughs> I think you can, when you look at the news coverage, you see you know, bombs dropping everywhere. There's, there's, there's challenges all across the board. 
But I think what, what we're observing really is when we look at the recent breaches and recent attacks, we're seeing that really the credential usage and credential really misuse and abuse is at the core of all of these different activities. So whether it's financial services, whether it's, it's, it's retailers or online banking and all of these different organizations, they're all seeing that at the, at, at the core of it. And, and so the challenge that I think a lot of customers have is this, there's this ability to connect the dots and for the analysts to really exercise their intuition. So a lot of the customers that I speak with, they have problems that are falling into two buckets. They either are in the, in the camp where they say, I really don't know what to do, and, and I really want Splunk to help me understand what that is. And then the other camp is to say, my analysts know exactly what to do, but my current product or other technologies don't enable me to exercise my, my creativity. And so those are the two places that we're, that we're naming, just like I had mentioned, with, with bringing in machine learning and data science to the capability, we're really trying to level the game up for the folks that need that extra assistance and, and, and want us to, to deliver and prescribe a solution. And then on the other side, you see all these new capability that we announced this week within enterprise security and other technologies on really saying, we get it, analysts are the core. And we're going to enable those analysts to do the best that they can do and exercise their own capability and intuitions. So let me ask you a question. When you walk into a customer, and let's just say they're a Splunk customer, they've been using the, the ES for a while, they're doing all the machine data, then they say, oh, I see all this machine learning, all this new stuff happening, you get called in, we want to call Splunk into the security conversation. What do you tell them? Like when you say, what's, what's the opening uh, line for you? Say, our platform, how do you describe the value proposition uh, in, in a way that gets them excited to the next level. Is it, is it just the effectiveness of getting the data fast and turning around um, the data visualization, the intelligence, the insight, or do you go into more of this is a solution for the lens? I mean, how do you talk through that? So, I talked to them the same way that I understood the, the solution many moons ago. I was a Splunk customer before I was a Splunk employee. So I bought and paid for it. It tends to be the case. The new CTO was yeah. a customer too. Yes. He did the keynote last year. Yes. We interviewed him today. He's and a kid in the candy store, yeah. he said. Absolutely. <laughs> and and because, because I think that's, because that's truthful, right? That I, 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 know, I know the pain, I know the burden, I know the product, I know the, I, I know the threat landscape. And so the conversation that I have with the customer is, let's talk about the problems. Let's talk about what you're challenged with. And, and really what it boils down to from an opening statement perspective is, we say, well, what is security data? Right? All data is security data. So, we, and we come to that conclusion. So you go right to the data. Right. The data conversation is yeah. right up front. Yep, Ab absolutely, because it's, it's, about, it's about the threats that the customers are challenged with. Mm -hmm. It's about the data that they want to look at, and it's really, it's their ability to understand what sort of things that they want to address and what's important to them, right? So as, as an example, you look at, look at an Apache log. And you say, well, who, who, whose property is that Apache log? Does it belong to the IT team? Does it belong to the, to the retail team? Does it belong to finance? Does it belong to security? Well, it belongs to everybody. Because the, the, the finance guy might look at it and go, well, it's interesting, people are buying more flowers from somewhere right now. And the IT guy might look at it and go, well, my web server is doing this many transactions. Mm -hmm. The security guy looks at it and go, well, this is very peculiar. I have never seen anyone purchase anything from this geolocation before. Right, so it's the same. It's the same data set. You got to get access to the data. That's yeah. number one. That's right? absolutely. So how do you get rid through the data hoarders? You know the guys out there who who hold the data, and you know the data cartels, as uh, your CTO has uh, calling the term. Uh, you know there are people who look at the data as a competitive advantage and don't want to give it up. They don't want to give access, or they just are hoarding the data. How do you guys break through that? What do you mean? Just slap them around a little bit and say, hey, come on, you want to get hacked? Or, I mean, is it that easy? Or so is I, so it I think that's where the experience comes to play again, right? Yeah. It's a, as having been a customer, having lived through those things and having trying to democratize the access to information and especially for security purposes, it's about, it, it comes right back to people again. It's because it's every, a data hoarder is hoarding the data because they feel that there is some value in it that enables them to do their job or provides them job security or whatever that is, or they feel sensitive about the information because they feel that nobody else should have it because they really seriously care about the stewardship of that information. And I think it's a matter of a conversation yeah. to help them see that this, this data helps them do things better, faster, or helps them so you have to provide achieve their mission. you have to provide some comfort so there's no cognitive dissonance for them to give up the data. So you have to address their concerns on privacy and security. Yes, absolutely. And you're comfortable with that right now in the current solution. Absolutely. Yes. And so also what, delivering value. Yeah, so they can yes. see when their data is put together with other data, there's additional insights yeah. that they can gain that they wouldn't have if they I mean, didn't. the ROI question is almost ridiculous in security because the ROI is so massive, it's like you don't even have to 
it's, a, it's an order of magnitude. It's like, it's like the security analyst on earlier, I asked him if he sized the TAM for the security market. He goes, I haven't gotten to that. I go, well, you just say it's huge. It's, it's, it's big, I mean, <laughs> you're off by, you know, it's just like, it's so big, it's not like to even be TAMed up. So, so the question comes back down to, how does that ROI get to the customer? In the products that you guys have, does it come through the insights? Because again, one outlier of data, one insight, could open up a, a whole nother window of analysis that could either protect or see breach. I mean, so, that's just ROI right there, you know, just write the check, you know, yeah. POs in the, in the, in the system. It's, it's also, like you said, it's top of mind for everybody, right? It's top of mind for the board, for the CEO, for the employees, even for just our regular people because the breaches that we've seen this year touched everybody's lives. Um, so it's not just a ROI, it's just are you solving the problem that's keeping me up at night? So Monzi, what's the top uh, three conversations that you, we'll do a little pattern recognition <laughs> in the spirit of machine learning, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I like so that. what's the top three patterns that you're seeing in the, in the conversation with your customers that keep coming up over and over again? That with, with I, think, I think customers are, most of our customers are ready to take the next step in their own maturity process for security operations. So if we draw some sort of kind of a continuum, right? We look at how things have been done in the past where you use signatures or specific indicators for something. And, cu and customers get it, they use that. Signatures are important, but there's something more. And what's more? So in recent couple of years with Splunk and with other technologies, you say, well, it's around analytics and it's around being able to understand what that is. Now they're starting to get comfortable with that and they're saying, okay, I get it, I see the analytics, but now because of these analytics, I'm stuck in this alert world. I'm just constantly, I get these alerts, these alerts are good, I get them, but now I got to work them. So what is, how do I get to that next level of, of solving those, the next set of problems because I can't put enough people, even if every single one of my alerts was absolutely important, what's my next level? So I want to ask you guys kind of a philosophical topic, kind of end the segment on a, on a kind of a like relaxing note. Um, how important is the concept of open data for building uh, security solutions? Open data meaning sharing the data. We're in a sharing economy. Now APIs now are dominating the conversation because there's no perimeter anymore. So what's happening is you have a lot of things going on, whether it's direct connect, peer-to-peer -peer anonymous networks, bypassing the internet from the DDoS all the way up to the edge of the, you know, point of edge to edge uh, security. It kind of counterintuitive to say, well, I'm going to open that up. So what's open data mean to you guys? How important is that concept? That's a great question. I think philosophically, right, we're in the security world where we're preaching uh, to the industry that it takes a village and we need to collaborate. And collaboration starts with information sharing. So we're very much on board to open that up so we can do things. However, we want to make sure the data that's shared it's accurate, and the data shared is actually actionable. That's actually is our and focus. And ensuring the privacy and security and concerns of the person sharing it, right? And, and making sure that sharing does not cost them more liabilities. Yeah. That's where we need the government and the legislation mm -hmm. support. Um, so, big fan of that, and we've been very much support a lot of the things that's So some that's policy going. stuff in there. How about on the yeah. product side? I think, and related to the same topic that Hyann's talking about, it, data sharing is not just about indicator sharing or threat intelligence sharing. It's really about recognizing that security is an ecosystem problem and an ecosystem solution. And so what we are working on a lot of our partners is to say, how is it that we take all of these different disparate systems and, and allow them to communicate with each other so that when you have a specialized system, for example, in security space, people talk about firewalls a lot. So if you have a firewall, how do I, how do I enable a firewall to speak with a Splunk? How do I enable a Splunk to speak with an endpoint system and so on and so forth, right? So that it's really up to the consumer at the end of the day, it's their data, mm -hmm. so it's, and a lot of customers now starting to react to that to say, I talked to vendor X, Y, and Z, and they said, well, this data is in a proprietary data store and I can't get it, and said, it's my data. I want it, and I understand that I paid the vendor to do something. And so I think that collaboration and, and, and within the ecosystem is really what's going to drive a lot of these yeah, things. Yeah, I think you guys are proven to the market, in my opinion, that the more the data interacts with each other, even from different, different disparate sources, makes the overall insight more valuable. Yeah. I mean, we see that some of the stuff we're doing at uh, SiliconANGLE on the crowd chat side, so, but again, if the challenge is more <laughs> of a politics or policy, open up the data, and then the, can the products ensure kind of that SLA of 
the yeah. security piece. But I think yeah. we're one, making, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say one comment is uh, we've been very much being used as a lot of customers at the nerve center for yeah. them and connecting yeah. all the different pieces together. And directionally, not only we want to be the nerve center for one customer, we want to cre create a connected uh, set of nerve centers where everybody can benefit from the latest learnings. Well that's a good point. The nerve center is really good. I think it's working. We had a lot of people on the cube this week, uh, this uh, today yeah. and yesterday. FireEye, we had Independence, we had Analysts, yep. we had Palo Alto Networks. So your ecosystem seems to be embracing this nerve center yep. concept. So yep. congratulations. Thank you. And that's only going to make the solutions better. Right. Absolutely. I mean that's the whole idea is the customers are going to make choices. They need, they, to your point, we want to be able to connect all these pieces together and more data is going to bring more value and really provide the, what is it that we're trying to protect ourselves from. I just think it's, it's phenomenal. I mean you guys have 10,000 customers which is great accomplishment. Oh, thank you. You guys are growing up and how tall can you grow? That's what we said in the morning yesterday in the analysis segment. But, Cisco's got 50,000 customers. They have five times more customers just on the UCS side. And they're partnering with you. Palo Alto Networks, bulletproof security. On the hardware side, that adds to your solution. So, you know, one plus one equals three in this. So you guys see that same thing on, out in the field? Absolutely. Okay, final question. Um, what's next? What's going to happen this year? So when we do the Cube next year, we say, okay, how do we do? What's your goals? What's your top three? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, but what's your goals for the year? What do you want to do for this next year? I think one of the things that's really, really obvious and very distinctive this year is people are, you know, last year people moved from just thinking about prevention to detection, and this year I think we're moving from just thinking about detection to early detection. And not only early detection, but detection in a way you can enable people to do rapid response. So next year, I hope to come back and talk to you a lot more about how we can enable our customers to really take care of the issues that they have to deal with versus just get to know about them. Maj, how about you? What's your goals besides not having gray hair because look, all the bombs <laughs> dropping, but you know, staying alive. What's your goals for the year? I think one <laughs> of the things that we're seeing that's evolving, what I would like to see is more sharing from a customer perspective uh, amongst how we do, and not just about an indicator, but about threat intelligence and how, what customers are doing with Splunk and make that very easy to share tactics and techniques to operationalize things. And, and really start to step up, we talked about the two basic pillars, right? Going from indicators to analytics and really going from analytics to have every customer have the ability so that they can develop their own threat intelligence so they can not, oh, to Hyann's point, not just understand this alert, but understand the broader consequences of what happens when this, when this particular activity is going on so they can, they can drive mission and business better. Well, congratulations, it's our fourth year broadcasting live at theCUBE at Splunk.com, so it's been fun to watch the evolution, and certainly, you know, you guys act like a startup still, but you're not, you're a public company, you're, you know, you're a big company now, so keep acting like a startup, I think the culture will continue to thrive. Customers love, love Splunk, so it's been, it's been a lot of fun, so thank Customers you. Customers, what made it successful, yeah. it's leading us into, yeah. into new yeah. places, we're forever grateful. Yeah, you have customers and a fan base all in one, so yep. congratulations. This is theCUBE, we are live here in Las Vegas, and you're, thanks for watching, and, and this is the wrap up of day two, thanks for watching theCUBE, and look for us at our next event, we got uh, Big Data NYC, we got um, uh, AWS reInvent, and a lot more, check out uh, theCUBE the at siliconangle.tv, thanks for watching.